Welcome to Faith in Five, a weekly video devotional designed to discuss practical spiritual concepts in five minutes or less. I'm your host, Mark Vandella. A couple weeks ago, maybe just over a month, uh, we, my wife and I had to put our family dog down. And uh, it's been just enough time that I think I can talk about it without crying. Uh, but it was really difficult. And we had to make the difficult phone call to call a vet and to come to our home and uh, put him down because he was, his health was failing. And it was a lot more difficult than I expected it to be, if I'm being completely honest. Uh, Ashley, my wife, would say that it was as difficult as she expected. But for me, it was a lot more difficult than I thought. And also, if I'm being honest, there's times throughout this process of uh, grieving and, and feeling sad about it that I felt kind of silly. Because I know, uh, you know, we're exposed to enough people's lives that I know there's people out there who are dealing with way more difficult, uh, way harder situations. And so I was constantly comparing this little bit of pain I was feeling to great pain that other people were feeling. And, and I kind of felt a little silly about it. And I think we tend to do that in difficulty. We tend to try to rate the amount of sadness or pain that we're feeling versus somebody else, that it's more or less. And as we think about what it means to be empathetic and what our faith requires of us to be empathetic, we're leaning on Nate Pyle's book, More Than You Can Handle. And in that book, he says that comparison is the enemy of empathy. Because when I feel that weird, this is kind of silly that this is as hard for me as it is. That's not fair. That's my reality. And it, it's, it's not compared to your reality. And what you're going through is unique to you and difficult for you. It may be equally difficult in different ways. It may even be more difficult, but that doesn't mean that mine, my pain or sadness should not exist. But for some reason, we like to fix things and we like to compare things. So everything is always more or less. But what if we could look at it as it's just not the same? There's not a, a, well, this is what I did. Therefore, that's what you have to do. And oftentimes in difficult times, in, in uh, sadness and sorrow moments where it calls for, these moments that call for empathy, we go to the place of fixing. This is what worked for me, so you should also do it. Or I learned that this is what works, so go do it. And in spaces of empathy, that is the worst thing we could do. More than you can handle is one of those things we've said in these spots. God will never give you more than you can handle. Or God has a plan. All of those are true, but they're not necessarily what we should grab in this moment. So the first thing that we experienced was the comparison to other people's pain is not the right way to go about empathy. There are times where life handles, hands us stuff and we, we get to handle it and we get to invite God into it. The second thing that we experience in this sadness, in this sorrow, is that it allowed other people to show up and it allowed God to show up through other people. We have never been through this, you know, the loss of a pet before, and a ton of people showed up. We right now have our part of our kitchen counters covered in probably 15 sympathy cards. It's got roses. Uh, we've got a flower, a daisy arrangement. And we have a little, one of our friends sent us a little figurine of a, uh, an angel holding a dog. And that friend specifically, our friend Amy said, you know what? We didn't know how to do this until we also went through it. And somebody did the same for us. And so the two things, when it comes to things that life gives us that are more than we can handle, instead of comparison and then trying to fix it, because that's what comparison leans us to, it's more that we should sit with people. Nate says in his book that the key to empathy in difficult spots is to sit with someone and say, I see you, I hear you, and I'm with you. We don't want an answer. In those, the last couple of weeks, I didn't want an answer. I didn't want somebody to tell me this is what worked for us. We wanted somebody to say, this is difficult. We see you. We're with you. 
we support you. And that's what God does over and over and over throughout the stories in the Bible. In fact, in John 11, 35 through 37, I think we get a really good picture of how God wants us to deal with times where we should step in and be his kind of mouthpiece in the face of difficulty. It's when Jesus loses his friend Lazarus. And we know that Jesus could fix that. He's done it over and over and over. And after this little portion of John 11, Jesus does fix it. But the important part of it is that Jesus actually takes time to sit with his sisters, with Lazarus' sisters, Mary and Martha. In John eleven thirty five 35 through 37, it says, They told him, Lord, come and see. And then Jesus wept. Jesus sat in it. He didn't try to fix it right away. He sat in it. That's what empathy looks like. I see you. I hear you. This is terrible, but I'm with you. And people noted. The people who really loved Lazarus and were around him said, See how much he loved him. This is what empathy looks like. And then the very next verse, other people said, what the heck? Jesus could have done something about it. He, he healed a blind man. Couldn't he have also kept Lazarus from dying? Those are the people that are missing the point. When our faith requires us to step in and sit down and be with people, sometimes it's just enough to say, I see you, I'm with you, and I hear you. This week, as you walk your faith, as life hands you difficult things or hands other people difficult things, Instead of looking to God and what are you going to do about it? How are you going to fix this? Also look to God in this example where he said, you know what? Sometimes we sit with, we see people, we hear them and we're with them. That is what empathy looks like in our faith. 